Good day, everybody. Welcome to the Bible in a Year 2021. We are on day 142. And our reading today is Psalm. Well, that's a few Psalms. It's Psalm 95, 97, 98, and 99. And there's a few things that we are going to learn here today. So we start off with a call to worship. Uh, this is this is the psalmist just shouting out here, come, let's sing out loud to the Lord. Let's raise a joyful shout to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before him with thanks. Let's shout songs of joy. So this is a jubilation. This is a celebration, which it should be every time we come before the Lord, regardless of what our experiences is, regardless of what we are going through. But we, we see it mentioned again, joyful joy. It's just giving thanks, shouting it's, uh, hmm. yeah, he loves a people who celebrate, and, and we worship for a reason, look at this, the Lord is a great God, let's come and worship him, guys, let's just celebrate him, because the Lord is a great God, the great king over all other gods, there's no one like him, the earth's depths are in his hands. The mountain heights belong to him. The sea which he made is his, along with the dry ground, which his own hands formed. So if, um, if you can't find reasons uh, to worship a personal savior, at the bare minimum, you should be able to worship the creator of all things. And, and that's basically what we have here. The creator of all things is what's being described here. That's the, that's the basic worship um, that, that we, we bring in and that we offer. Um, then we, 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 we recognize here we, we are his people. We belong to him. Okay. There's a dose of reality in this. Just, let's just look at this in verse 6 to 7 in 95. Come, let's worship and bow down. Let's kneel before the Lord, our maker, so our creator, he is our God. We have claimed him. He is our God. We acknowledge that he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture. So we belong to him, the sheep in his hands. We belong to him. There is a belonging that happens. It's, this is more than just the general sense of belonging um, to the creator, as in all things belong to the creator. But um, specifically, um, he has set us aside. We are, we are the pinnacle. We, there's something special. Uh, we have it from the perspective that he is our father. We've been adopted by him. So, so we understand that we are his people. Um, if only you would listen to his voice right now. Yeah, that's, that's the, that's the dose of reality right there. Uh, we have this responsibility. If we are going to claim that he is our God, if we're going to say that he is our father, there, there is a responsibility we have of listening to his voice, of listening to him. That's our responsibility. And um, hmm, we need to listen. We need to listen. If he's the authority in of our lives, then we need to listen to that authority. Now, Psalm 97 really deals with uh, a number of things that we, we know about Yahweh. It's, it's limited. It's, it's limited here, but it, it's a list of things, basic things that we should know. Uh, first of all, in, in verse 1, the Lord rules. Let the earth rejoice. Let all the islands celebrate. He rules. He's, uh, um, there's a difference between saying he, he's in charge and he's in control. Okay? Okay. Um, being in charge, he put everything in order. He, he has defined everything. He has put all the rules in place. Um, he, he refuses to take control uh, unless we, we give him control, unless we uh, set aside our preferences and choose him. But that's still us choosing, isn't it? Um, we have been left with the choices to make. Uh, he does want, not want to control us. He wants us to come to him in this this relationship of love where we recognize that his ways are best for us and we choose that. So when we say the Lord rules, he doesn't rule a planet of robots. He, he rules as in he put everything in order, everything in its place, even for our salvation. 
when we receive the Holy Spirit, he plants in us everything that we need for, for, for life and holy living. That's what the word says. Um, he's, he's placed that in us. So, yeah, he rules. In verse 2, uh, he, look, look at what the foundation is, what the, the foundation. Uh, clouds and thick darkness surround God. His throne is built on righteousness and justice. Justice. Justice is based on truth. So this is the, the, this is the foundation of the kingdom as we understand it. Uh, righteousness, doing what is right doing what is right by the definition of the king. The king defines what is right. We do what is right. And so we are considered righteous. There's a, a righteous of relationship, which is what Jesus has done for us. He's brought us into this, this right relationship. Uh, but there's also a righteousness of actions. And uh, we've been called to that. In that justice, the sense of um, right and wrong, the sense of um, looking after the marginalized, um, being fair, you know, that's that, uh, that sense of justice in, uh, and, and <laughs> guys, here's a simple fact, uh, verse three, uh, fire proceeds before him, burning up his enemies on every side. And the fact is that humanity, as much as Yahweh loves humanity, humanity decided to be enemies of Yahweh. And that's what Jesus saved us from. While we were yet sinners, while we were yet the enemy of Yahweh, while we were his enemy, Christ Jesus died for us. Yeah, he died for his enemies. He laid down his life for his enemies, that they would no longer be enemies, but be reconciled to Father and be adopted and brought into this family, be redeemed from this path of destruction. But if we do not choose that, then understand that God's enemies will die. Um, verse 4 deals with something that's really important for us to realize. Um, God is seen. Okay, he, 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 is, he is very seeable. He, he is not invisible. We just don't tune into the frequency. We don't hear his voice because we don't tune into him. Uh, we don't see him all around us because we choose not to. Um, it's the, the physical, visible, the invisible can become visible uh, when we search for it. That's why he says that, you know, if you seek for my face, if you seek my face, you will find it. But it has to be this thing. He, we have a, his lightning lights up the world. The earth sees it and trembles. If we are willing to recognize him as creator, then all the wonders we see around us belong to him and reveal who he is. Um, I mean, verse five, he's powerful. It's as simple as that. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of the whole world. Hmm. the Lord of the whole world, um, powerful. Right? He has to be powerful to be creator. And all of creation uh, fits within his hand. Um, it's, uh, there's, there's nothing that can get beyond the fact that he rules. It, it, it just, he speaks it, it is. Uh, he stops thinking about it, it ceases to be. It's, it, that's, that's and, and the power to forgive power to forgive and forget, to show mercy, compassion, just it's amazing stuff. Um, it's important, it's absolutely important to know that Yahweh can be seen. Um, it's, we, we, we do a lot better in this world um, if we would stop talking about the invisible God and, and talk about the visible God. Heaven has proclaimed God's righteousness and all nations have seen his glory. He displays his glory quite often through us that we need to understand. So we need, we need to walk in righteousness and we need to let him do what he's going to do. We have to trust him that if he needs us to go through certain things so that we're in a weakened position so that he can, he can show his strength through our weakness and he gets glory, then, then we need to do that. That's how the world sees. 
And then there are the benefits, okay, in verses uh, 10 to 11 in, in chapter 97, or in Psalm 97. Um, those of you who love the Lord hate evil. Simple as that. Hate evil. Hate, hate the things that, that go contrary to who Yahweh is. Uh, we, we should hate every abusive situation. Uh, we should... Um, we, we should absolutely be abhorrent at any thought of, of abusing a relationship, of, of a being abusive. We, we should absolutely hate anything that flies in the face of who he is. Um, God guards the lives of his faithful ones. That's a benefit, people. He guards our lives of his faithful ones, delivering them from the power of the wicked. I understand that he's our, our deliverer in these in these trying times um, from, from the wicked. Light is planted like seed for the righteous person. We're never left in the dark, ever. Joy too, for those whose, whose heart is right. So, so you see that, right? You know, he, he guards us, he delivers us, uh, he provides us with light and, and he fills us with joy. Benefits of the relationship. Again, we go back. Um, in, in um, Psalm 98, this is such an important thing for us to grasp. Uh, the Lord has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness. So you see that, right? He has made his salvation widely known. He has revealed his righteousness in the eyes of all the nations. God has remembered his loyal love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. Every corner of the earth has seen our God's salvation. He does that through his church. He does that through his people. That's what's being revealed through us. His mystery is seen through the body of Christ. Are we participating in that? Are we trying to control our own futures? Are we being trying to be the, the captain of our own destiny? Where we're afraid actually to submit to him. We're afraid to come in. That's our choice to come in and actually set aside our right to control ourselves and, and do what he has us do, walk through what he asks us to walk through, to allow him to use us to glorify himself through us. He's to be seen. And then in, in Psalm uh, 99, uh, we just get the wonder of the whole relationship. And, and we see it through Moses and Aaron and Samuel here. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel, too, among those who called on his name. They cried out to the Lord, and he himself answered them. That's all of us, people. That's all of us. He spoke to them from a pillar of cloud. They kept the laws and the rules God gave to them. That's the relationship we're to have, this intimate, wonderful, powerful relationship where we actually have conversation with him. And, and, uh, and this is what they knew of him. Um, Lord our God, you answered them. To them, you were a God who forgives. To them, you are God who forgives, but also the one who avenged the wrong deeds. Uh, and in this sense, it's, it's the correction. Uh, and it's, we, we have more of that sense of correction these days than perhaps at that time. Um, we understand he, he needs to correct us like a good father. Uh, we need correction uh, so that we can prosper in him. And so that's what he does. And, um, and, and, he, and he's, obviously he's forgiven. We, we know that, right? Because of our relationship with him. And that's uh, important for us going forward, understanding this forgiveness, this mercy, this compassion that he has poured out upon us. That we, uh, and as a result, it means that we can trust him in everything and all the rest of it, we can trust him because of this one thing that he did. Okay, guys, thank you very much for being with me today. I hope that you got some stuff out of this that's going to help you in your day. Holy Spirit will bring it back to your thinking. I'll guarantee you that uh, throughout your day and maybe into tomorrow. And, and I pray that he, he uses it to get you through the things that you need to get through today. So God bless and thanks for being on the journey with me. We'll see you tomorrow.